I'm here to present our work on a prototype testbed of novel types of devices we are referring to as energy harvesting active network tags, or ENHANCE for short. Future ENHANCE will be small, flexible, and energetically self-reliant devices that you will be able to attach to commonplace objects. ENHANCE will provide infrastructure for novel tracking applications. For example, searching for a misplaced object on a network of devices or peer-based object proximity monitoring. What makes ENHANCE possible are the advances in two areas of technology, energy harvesting and ultra-low power, ultra-wideband communications. ENHANCE will form sustainable networks in environmentally challenging conditions. For example, indoors, harvesting the energy of the indoor lights. The prototypes harvest energy from the environment. They must dynamically adapt to changing energy conditions. What we are presenting here in this work is a set of prototypes that are harvesting the energy of the indoor lights, communicating with each other wirelessly using novel ultra-wideband custom design transceivers, and that are dynamically adapting to the changing environmental energy, both as on the device level as well as the entire network. Here we have a current enhanced prototype. Notice that it is larger than our envisioned prototype, however, it already contains many enabling technologies. The prototype relies on the microprocessor of a moat. However, the prototype does not use the moat's transceiver. Instead, the prototype communicates with other prototypes using a custom developed, ultra low power, ultra wide band transceiver. Each prototype is integrated with an energy harvesting module, or EHM, that collects the indoor light energy using an organic solar cell. A Fennec Fox software platform runs on the microprocessor to seamlessly integrate these novel hardware components. The microprocessor controls the system using energy adaptive networking algorithms. To enable an interactive demo, each prototype contains an MIB600 programming board which is connected to a computer running a graphical monitoring system. We are enabling the various connectivity of the enhanced tags by UWB radio chips. Uh, the UWB stands for ultra wideband, and uh, in this case, we have designed uh, the, 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 these chips customizedly in 90 nanometer uh, 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 standard CMOS technologies. And uh, our our chip is operating at uh, 3.8 gigahertz with a 500 megahertz bandwidth, uh, and uh, our our data rate can be scaled up, uh, from several hundred BPS to several hundred K BPS. Because we are transmitting with this very narrow RF pulses, so we can heavily duty cycle our radio chips so that we can save a lot of energy comparing to our con continuous carrier wave counterparts. This is a dedicated custom designed printed circuit board that integrates the UWB radio chipset into the enhanced prototype. And on this board, the transmitter is located here, and the receiver is located here. And uh, they are duplexed onto the ultra-wideband uh, antenna. Our modulation scheme is called SOK, uh, synchronized on-off key. On the oscilloscope, you, you can see that uh, the, uh, the red signal uh, is the uh, signal, baseband signal that goes into the radio chip. Uh, it, it has two, po two pulses. Uh, and uh, where the first pulse is a synchronized pulse, uh, which uh, which announced the, the start of a bit, and the s second pulse, which is exactly one microsecond after that, uh, is modulated with the data. When the, there is a pulse here, it means a one, and the, when the app pulse is absent, it means a zero. For power consumptions, we uh, we have achieved uh, about 800 picojoule per bit for transmitting and less than two nanojoule per bit for receiving and uh, th that is like two orders of magnitude th th less than Wi-Fi or ZigBee. I'm going to tell you how we develop our organic solar cells. Organic solar cells are optimal for enhanced because they are the most efficient under indoor lighting. Secondly, they can be made on flexible substrates due to their fabrication process. The fabrication process begins with cleaning the substrate, which is glass covered with patterned ITO. Since the layers of the solar cell are so thin, all particles of dust are comparatively enormous and any left on the substrate could render it useless. 
The substrates are then placed under UV ozone for 10 minutes to remove any leftover contaminants. After cleaning, the first organic material is shaken to break apart any large aggregates, which would also be huge compared to the thickness of the layers, put through a filter to remove the smaller aggregates and ensure a smooth layer, and spun onto the substrate. The substrates are then moved into our glove box, an oxygen and water-free environment that protects the organics, which degrade when in contact with those molecules. The coating process is then repeated with the next organic material, and these two materials together constitute the photoactive layer of the solar cell. The last material is aluminum, which is deposited onto the solar cell using an evaporator. A mask is placed on the solar cell to determine the pattern of the aluminum, and the solar cells are placed in the chamber face down. Once the chamber is under vacuum, the aluminum in the bottom is heated up until it evaporates, floats through the chamber, and coats the solar cell in an even layer. That completes the solar cell. The EHM serves two purposes. It measures the energy coming in from the solar cell and also stores the energy in a battery. It reports these values in real time to the rest of the system. Uh, so first off, it measures uh, the incoming net harvested energy uh, using a high side current sense amplifier, uh, which can be multiplied by the battery's voltage to get incoming power. Uh, the net power in the battery, which is the energy harvested minus the energy spent, is measured by a DS2740 Coulomb counter, which also accumulates the current so that we can track the battery's uh, capacity. Uh, we currently do not run the system on the battery, uh, although we envision doing so as we scale down the power. Uh, so as such, we have a simulated spending uh, circuit, a switch that discharges the battery, and a red LED indicator to show when the energy is being spent. Here we have four prototypes, numbered from one to four. Uh, here we can observe the environmental energy and monitor it on the, on the system. Uh, whenever we transmit a message over the wireless channel, we flash the error on the screen. Additionally, we have the oscilloscope here, um, probing on the UWB uh, transmitter, and node number one, two, and four are sending the energy adaptive parameters to the coordinator. This includes the battery level and the harvested energy from the environment. Based on these parameters, the nodes adapt their communication rates. Using our custom lighting control system, we can observe the influence of environmental energy availability on the communications and networking behavior of the prototypes. In this example, the four nodes form a network in which the data rates are assigned by a coordinator which is dynamically selected. Here, the node listed as three is the coordinator. Initially, there is minimal light being harvested by each of the nodes, and thereby they all transmit using a minimum transmission rate. However, when we increase the light incident on each of the nodes, the monitoring system will adjust in real time with the suns growing larger and the power harvested of each of the nodes increasing. Then, after the nodes exchange their information with the rest of the network, they will adjust their transmission rate to account for this added environmental energy. If one of the nodes receives less energy, the network will adapt to this. When node 3 receives less light, it throttles the transmission rates of each of its neighbors as it can no longer sustain the increased traffic load. If a node receives less energy over some time, its battery level will decrease and a new coordinator will be selected. To recap, we are building small, flexible, and energetically self-reliant tags that can be attached to objects that are traditionally not networked. Enhance will enable the Internet of Things, and as such, will support a variety of novel tracking and monitoring applications. Our current prototype testbed showcases ultra-wideband impulse radio-based wireless communications, organic energy harvesting technologies, an energy harvesting module, and energy adaptive networking functionalities. Using our graphical monitoring system and environmental energy control system, we demonstrate energy adaptive networking functionalities whereby our nodes form a network and adapt their communication patterns to the harvested energy and battery status. Moving forward, we will develop algorithms that will leverage the capabilities of the tags, as well as integrating all of the novel components into a single tag.